Hey guys, so just like probably many other videos out there, I'm going to be making a video talking about Infinite Chaos Dungeon Farming. I know some of you guys that are Tier 3 out there are aware of farming this place, but for some people that are not aware of it and want to know a good way to get some quick gold and whatnot, here's a good way of doing it. So the big reasons as to why you want to farm Infinite Chaos Dungeons is because there's three big reasons why. The first one being material for honing. So in Infinite Chaos, you get Guardians and Destruction Stones bounded to your character. Now these things go for quite a lot on the marketplace, um, quite expensive even if you buy in big bulks. But if you farm for a good maybe one or two hours, that bulk amount gives you enough for probably like one or two honing chances depending on where you are. And that is a good chunk of money that you save that you don't have to spend on buying resources. The second is you can make gold via the shop. The shop is a chaos dungeon shop that you guys can access near the NP or near the statue of the chaos dungeon. And in tier three cases, it is special because all the resources or yeah, all the resources in tier three shop can be traded. So if you guys want to make some gold, you just go ahead and trade in your currency that you get from the infinite chaos dungeons. And you can sell that in the marketplace to get some gold if you really, really need to. And lastly, this is for a min maxi kind of thing. Uh, it drops accessories, accessories that can you can get better accessories in Infinite Chaos. So if you guys are running like engravings of accessories or weird stat um, combat stat uh, accessories that you guys don't like, this is a good opportunity for you to farm some without having to buy them from the marketplace. So before we get started, I want to make sure that you guys are aware of how Infinite Chaos Dungeons are working. So you're given uh, Aura Resonance uh, 100 out of 50 every single day. Once this depletes down to zero, you have access to Infinite Chaos. To get to zero, that's basically two daily, infinite, uh, two daily Chaos Dungeon runs. After that, Infinite Chaos is happening until next reset. So in this time frame, everything you do in Chaos Dungeons will give you uh, a currency called Shard, uh, Shard of Purification that you can use to trade in in the shop. So for engraving setups, it's very, very simple. Infinite Chaos, I don't think it's the hardest uh, content in the game, so you can pretty much run whatever you want. But there are ways to make your life easier or just make things a little bit more convenient for you while you're farming. Um, the first engraving I want to recommend that I'm pretty sure a lot of people are already recommending is going to be Preemptive Strike. So what Preemptive Strike does is basically your first hit, when it crits, it's going to do a lot of damage. This makes it be, uh, so you can kill trash mobs in basically one hit. Even though a lot of them are low health to begin with, this makes it so you're pretty much going to one-shot it and speed up the clearing process a lot easier. The second engraving I want to recommend is Heavy Armor. Heavy Armor is more of a defensive engraving. This makes it so if you want to tab out for whatever reason, you want to talk to someone, or you just gotta stop playing for like five five to ten seconds, you can tank a couple hits without having to just die on your character, which is gonna be embarrassing, and you're gonna have to waste more silver trying to repair your armor. So, heavy armor is a good option to take as well too. Otherwise, if you wanna go more offensive, preemptive strike is definitely gonna be better. So the strategy for doing infinite chaos is quite simple. You wanna take a lot of AoE wave clearing skills as much as possible to speed up the process. Um, there's going to be, uh, the first wave is going to be 17%. Uh, when you get to about 17% on the top left corner of the screen, that's when the portal is going to open up and you want to go in there. So kill all the mobs in the first room until like, the portal spawns and go right in. Once you get to the second room, there's going to be specific mobs you want to kill. The first are going to be named monsters. Named monsters are going to be on, on the mini map. And they're, lo or, uh, they're located with a orange icon, like an orange skull icon. You want to kill all of those because those mobs are going to yield our, uh, destruction and guardian fragments that you're going to need for honing on your gear. And the second one is going to be the challenge monster. The challenge monster is going to be indicated on the mini map with a red skull. This is the quote unquote boss of infinite chaos or just chaos dungeons in general. It's going to have a lot more health and you want to kill that right away. The moment you kill that enemy, it's going to spawn three type of portals. There's going to be the regular black portal, there's going to be the gold portal, and then there's going to be the red portal that I'll talk about later on. But 
the strategy here is basically you want to kill up until the second room, which is the named and challenged monster rooms. And once you unlock that portal, if it's a black portal, you leave. If it's a gold or red portal, you go in. The reason why is because the gold and red portals yield special mobs inside of them. Gold portal is going to have a, a basically a single mob that's pretty t durable, but it's, it doesn't take too long to kill. It's going to yield you a lot of the accessory currency, which I'll talk about later on. And it's going to give you at least one solar uh, grace or one solar blessing. It's kind of RNG, but it can happen. And for the red portal, it's going to give you up to 10 solar graces, 5 solar blessings, or even 1 solar protection. I think solar protection also applies to the gold portal as well too, but it's a very, very rare drop rate. So these are the portals you want because they give you honing uh, boost, or the, what do you want to call them, honing boost items, which are going to help you for your honing if you guys are very, very unlucky or not feeling um <laughs> and you're not feeling confident in your taps for that day it's going to help out quite a bit so the idea is you want to kill the first room the 17 percent unlock the sev second room kill until you kill the challenge monster and get the portal to spawn which is going to happen roughly around the 45 percent to 50 percent mark once that's done if it's a black portal you leave if it's a red portal or gold portal you go in and you kill the mob inside there once you kill the mob inside there you leave same thing applies, go back in uh, once you're done, and then just cycle that over and over again. It takes about two to two and a half minutes for my uh, clear times. So depending on how fast you guys go, you can do it faster, you can do it slower, but it's just about the two minute mark or so, give or take. And as we're picking which map to farm, uh, me personally, I'm about 1341 item level as of right now, and I like to farm 1310. The reason why is because as you do harder and harder Chaos Dungeon maps, the boss or uh, the HP bars are going to get exp exponentially higher. Um, my personal um, experience is that once you get into 1325, the health is extremely high for payouts. Um, if you guys are doing the two room and leave method like I am, up until 1340, I believe it's like the base one of th uh, 1100 is about 60 uh, uh, shards of purification in two rooms. The third uh, 1310 one is about 80. 1325 is about 90. And 1340 is about 100 per clear. We're not clear uh, the two rooms and leave, right? So the health is a lot higher, meaning it's going to slow you down. Now, you do get better loot in 1340. Don't get me wrong. It drops purple accessories. Um, but the clear time is just, it takes maybe like maybe 30, 30 seconds to a minute longer, depending on what you get. And if you get a red portal, there's going to be a boss in there. The health is much, much higher compared to the 1310 one. So if you guys are in the th uh, tier three mark, I highly recommend just farming 1310. That's what, I'm, I, what I've been doing for like a week now or a week and a half now. 1310 is where I recommend. Otherwise, if you guys really want to push for better purple accessories, you want to gamble a bit. Uh, th 1340 is probably your best take after that. Once you guys have enough currency and you access the Infinite Chaos Dungeon Shop, how you want to purchase items in this shop, if you're going for pure gold, is up to you guys. But I'll give you guys the general idea on how I like to purchase things from the shop. So my golden rule of thumb is as of right now, if the exchange rate is a one pure shard of purification for one gold, I'm going to buy it. So for example, I'm going to use some of these uh, methods in this video that I'll be showing you guys. I'm looking up the shop as of right now for Leap Stones. I see Leap Stones as of right now for Great Honor Leap Stones are about 700 gold a piece. And my shop as of right now, the lowest one is about 490. So 490 shards of purification for 700 gold, that's worth it to me. Um, me personally, I make about 2,000 to 2.5k shards an hour depending on how fast they go. So I'm looking at about maybe 2,000 gold an hour in terms of shop. Now it's going to get lower and lower the more the shop uh, is purchased on items. If you guys don't know, the more you buy the item for tier 3 items, the more expensive it gets. So you can't do this long term because it's not going to be super efficient after, say, the first five uh, sets of items that you buy from the shop. So in this case, if it's a one-to-one -one ratio, you guys can do the math on your own. 
I say it's worth buying. Now you can push as low as maybe one to uh, maybe like one to 0.67 ratio. So like if you spend a thousand shards of purification for 667 gold, I say that's worth it. When you get to about a thousand shards for 500 gold, now that's going to be pushing it a bit. By that point, you've farmed so much infinite chaos for that week. I say go do something else because it's not going to be worth your time doing this super, super long term. But I say the good, a good maybe the first 10 hours of that week that you're farming infinite chaos will give you a good yield on gold and stuff that you can purchase from the shop. So once again, if it's a one to one ratio, definitely buy it. After that, if you guys want to push a little bit lower, just find the best ratio on shard to gold ratio item in the shop. Buy that, sell it, and you're good to go. Now, as for accessories, they give you this purple currency that you get from Infinite Chaos as well, too. Uh, again, the more you buy the accessories, the more expensive it's going to get. So, round it out, buy one of each accessory first, and then move your way up. So, buy one necklace, two rings, two earrings, then buy again one necklace, two earrings, two e rings again, so forth, so forth, so forth, until you guys run out of purple currency shop for that week. So... Buy that. If you find something good, go ahead and sell them. I'm not going to tell you guys exactly which ones are the best ones because there are a lot of good accessories out there. But if you guys don't know, you can just dig up which are the best engravings. And then if you find a good one, go ahead and list it. So you're, you'll just shove some good amount of gold. So that's my video on Infinite Chaos Dungeon farming. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been doing this for about two weeks now nonstop. Well, not nonstop, but I'm doing it for many, many hours now. If you guys have questions, feel free to ask me. I'll go ahead and either answer them or adjust something that I may have said wrong. But again, this isn't something you want to do long term. If you want to do it for like maybe like two or three hours a week, that's perfectly fine. You can get some good amount of gold there. Otherwise, though, you're better off doing a lot of things in the game nowadays compared to infinite chaos farming. It was very good about two weeks ago. But now that the market has gone a bit lower, it's not as effective anymore. But if you are looking for getting some quick pocket change for gold or whatever, then it's still a good option to grab something in there and just get some gold out of it. You're, not to mention you're also farming for boundable honing material as well too, which will save you gold in the long run as well too, so to keep that in mind. So enjoy the video guys. Any questions, feel free to ask me, and I'll see you guys in the next video as always.